Morgan from the Variety Gamers UK and this is Torment Tides of Numera. Numera or some other something. Now so I'm going to start a game of this. There it goes. Yeah, Numenera. Keeping it wrong, I keep saying Numenera or something. Oh, let's start a game and see how it goes. Distant howling surrounds you, louder with each passing second. Insistent and invisible hands slap and tear at the membrane that protects you. Your first emotion is an involuntary and formless panic. You feel you have forgotten something, something important. As if it once meant the world to you, but the details slip away as you grasp at them. You force your eyes open. The body is... wait, you are, wearing a form-fitting suit of some dark material. You recall that you were wearing something much more elaborate a short time ago. You have smooth, light brown skin, five fingers on each hand, five toes on each foot. Good muscles, strong but not bulky, and slim hips. Your palms are soft, as if they have not done much labor, but scars and burns on the hands and wrists suggest that you haven't always been careful. Why can't you remember this? Without warning, the cocoon that surrounds you shreds and tears away. You are falling. Above you, a small moon is slowly collapsing in on itself. The world is many kilometers below you. your arms and legs, and they respond sluggishly. You stop tumbling head over heels. Though you are still spinning laterally, that motion has calmed as well, and you have space to assess your situation, and perhaps to understand the predicament and the body in which you find yourself. Below you, you see a large landmass. A massive ocean dominates the rest of the visible globe, dotted here and there with island chains. Small moons, unusual structures, and strange machines rush past you in glittering profusion as you plummet toward the ground. Now you see that this appears to be a huge megacontinent, the only land of any size on this side of the world at least. Great inland seas and lakes dot the land, and curiously, regular mountain ranges march up and down and across. You are falling toward what looks to be a great bay, a sprawling city perched on its shore just to the north. Further to the north and east, you see a broad plain scattered with curious structures visible even from this height. The northeastern portion of this land looks to be a desert, a strange blue dot like an eye in its exact center. It seems to hold a city in its watery grasp. To its west is a ring of huge mountains surmounted by enormous carved peaks spewing magma into a central catch basin. What concerns you most right now is the bay below you. It's coming at you quickly. reached a velocity that could, without irony, best be named Terminal. You spread your arms and legs and try to catch a draft, and it looks like you'll hit the bay that's rushing toward you, unless you hit the building in its littered waters. A strange web of colors surrounds you, thrown by a figure standing on the balcony of the structure, but it is effective only at slowing your fall. 
You strike the building hard enough to crack its crystalline structure, and you hear one of the engines that supports it protest and howl, and the agony of the crash overcomes you, and then, darkness. Your fingers are slightly overlapping scales, I should really. Spiral up from the bottom of the bulb, sharp toothed rim looks at your skin. It's going to do this ball without slashing your fingers on the edge. Across the ball, that's another droplet. But it was still going to talk for me, so apologies for the first part, guys. And a ball. That is pretty much what the first. Oh no, never mind. Jumble thoughts cloud your head as you study the empty ball before you. Drops of liquid fall from the ceiling, splattering on the ground next to your ball. Light from every drop is reflecting the ball's hollow, rounded hollow, as if that light and needs to be filled. All remains dry. Drop falls from the ceiling and splashes across the pylons, wasted. We'll need additional pylons. I examined the bowl and then we traced I think it's over the fear of lapping scales that spiral up from the bottom of the bowl, the sharp toothed rib. Oh about slashing your fingers on the edge. Put it into it. Light streaks across the surface of the bowl as another droplet. I could examine the bowl again like I did first time, or I could carefully move the bowl beneath the liquid. Oh, I can leave the ball alone. Well, we may as well carefully try and move the ball beneath the liquid. Uh, so we've encountered our first task. We have, well, I have three stat pulls, might, speed, and intellect. I can spend to increase my chance of success. This is called using effort. To more easily move ball in front of you, use left stick to spend night for a high level of effort. So don't worry, you fail this task in torment. Failure often results in interesting outcomes. Okay. So, stick. Oh, if only there was someone in chat, because it's like, should I, I, I'm not going to waste the maximum points, because I'm guessing I might need them later on. So, I probably fail. So, I'm going to use one. damage to help pull. Failure. The edge of the bowl tear at your flesh as you seize it. You grip through the pain, though, hauling the bowl over the glowing pool of fallen light. trails from your fingers into the hungry depths of the bowl. Drop by drop, it fills your blood, mixing with the light, until the air itself takes on a strange reddish hue. Ripples spread over the blurred outline of your reflection. And green radiance spills from across the segmented floor, washing away the nearest shadows and pouring into your mind, melting the 
ragged edges of your fragmented force. You are not whole, not yet. You have begun to heal from the damage done in your body. A voice calls out from somewhere high above you, beyond the reach of the spreading light. Hello, are you still alive down there? We're up here. Build a platform to us and be careful. I work right now. Having this again. Do. Well, what happens if we return the bowl? Let's try it. The bowl alone. No point trying again. Interact with the lights. Up and memory floods your mind. And in front of a rusted door, the air is humid and dank. You've had a moment's respite from this water, the logged hell. A bubble of stale air, your resting point. You've water before, and you've lived decades in different ways, but this body is an air breather. Constant pressure has been crushing you. First, your companion's mind seems to be wandering from the task. Genius from machines, as you all know, now he seems. Ice in his hand is covered in knobs, wires, and antennas. He believes it can get two of you. Roded dog is merely staring at him. Perhaps he's lost faith in the That is hardly your concern. Him by telling him that you've heard sounds of the suit. Press him until he returns to task at hand, or this is taking too long. Cast a spell and as a ice yourself. I will go with free. Fumble a few words, drawing power from the air around you until a solution appears in your mind. You snatch the device from his hands, rewire it, and shove it back at him. Oh, he says, excellent, I mean you work. Oh yeah, I was trying to improve the thing. He waves the device at the door, and the stale air of your bubble will crash into or swings open. The dark hallway lies beyond, a passage that links the water boarded cells and the aquatic area. What you seek lies there. Moments later, you're underwater again, your hands closing around a strange yet familiar artifact. You need it to complete something. It hooks above a ped pedestal rotating in the dark water. Electric current runs through your fingers as your hand crosses the pedestal. Iridescent, um, uh, iridescent, iridescent field coalesces so fast that the wave of pressure sure, lazes you for a moment. <coughs> Apologies, guys, I don't get huge words like that in normal conversation usually. Rising pulse of a sonar alarm ripples through the water. Guards won't be far behind. Device to stop them. Your urgent fingers over the device fastened to your grace. Fog rising in your mind, a few can be used as will also turn your skin to sink. All the surrounding water boiling wax. Hardly ideal. Finally, you found a small silver sphere. Set it to be in place, you kick desperately for the sink. Hit my alcove. It whirls and unfolds into a spiraling vortex. Here at its centre, white words in ancient language. It's raining as well as water in the mouth of the armies. British guards shout, then scream as they too are sucked into the world or in the grip to pieces. Allow yourself a fleeting smile when you all too aware that more alarms are going off in the distance. Memory begins to fade as if you were being drawn backward through a tunnel and you hear more pylons waiting for rising. The adventure within the orb have settled into that camp. Though the memory itself is not true at all. Our air is pulling at you. It's uh, inhaling the scent of its prey. Our end of that whispering. Uh, 
strange as though what you see in it is real and you're the reflection. Right around the door frame, it's uh, like a roaring fire in the high mind. I'm beside a woman on a verdant crag. Beneath the two of you is a broad plateau, towering above the overgrowth far below. A strange machine has been built into the cliffside. Reconnaissance or defense, a metallic disc gleams from the center of the plateau. Your self aware humanoid machines drill into the base of the cliffs below. We are looking for a sanctuary and you desperately at the right place. I don't know about this, the woman says, her voice flat, neutral, her face is turned away from you. What makes this place any more secure than your ones? Pull attention to the hidden details that. You're more experienced. I can clearly see. Use your charm to persuade you on the merits of the site. Uh, with the wisdom of your superior intellect. This must be character creation. So, I'm going to go with superior intellect. A slight chill enters the air as you describe the potential power of the metallic disc below and the So, that's what your servitor means. Already chosen this as your place for your affirmation. There's all right, I'm convinced. The two of you sketch your plans for the sanctuary drawing schematics and diagrams. Then you descend onto the plateau to examine the open ground. The woman suggests having one of the servitors build a shelter for your time here. You draw. Try to draw one of the constructs away from his task onto your voice. When you lay a hand on its shoulder to enforce your command, it rolls and strikes you across the face. It's back to its task and mind. It helps you rise, laughter in her eyes. See if your construct has, construct has other ideas. What's the matter of it? For a deeper solution. An error integrated into the construct's body to overwhelm the behavior malfunction, or examine the construct faults, or look for a deeper solution. Perhaps it's an effect of the metallic disc itself. The mist falls onto the plateau as you wrap a fiber shielding mesh around the construct's skull. The mesh, power, the mesh powers up, protecting the construct's mind from any. All emission from the area. Refuge repeat all command. Acknowledged, it obediently trundles to the site of your new shelter. Eight, and you feel the memory filling the gap in your mind. Block by jag block, you stagger, clutching your head, reclaiming your memories. Earth. Once more, there's something else. Hairs lift one by one on the back of your neck. Something beyond this room can sense what you're doing it. No sign or symbol tells you what might be behind this enormous door. A dull chill radiates from its bronze segment of surface. Well, this has been Irian from the Variety Chemist UK. This has been Torment Titan Numenera. I will resume this later on, but for now I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching and happy gaming.